Hey, what's up Wednesday 107? Today is Meet the Artist Part 2 for the Women Who Walked on Water Portrait Project. We're going to see the remaining artwork and hear the artists describe their process and their inspiration. And we encourage you to go to my website, joysandrhythmmusic.com, to see the entire video that each of the artists has created. Thanks to each of them for their brilliant participation in this project. I saw Joy's post about she was looking for artists to depict uh, women that were in her song, Women Who Walked on Water. And I instantly was interested because I played violin on this album that the song came off of. So I was like, ooh, it'd be fun to do some art for it as well. I have great respect for Ella and her music and what she did for um, women in the jazz world. I play a lot of jazz music. It's probably my favorite style of music to play. I am not a professionally trained artist. Um, I've mostly taught myself. I think I had a year or two in junior high and maybe a year of high school, but everything is just learned by doing. I always try to put a unique or interesting background uh, to my paintings. Um, I wanted to not just paint Ruth Bader Ginsburg as you commonly see her as a Supreme Court Justice, but I wanted to take it from a different period in her life. So I picked a period from when she was younger and just starting out hearing cases. And so I, I found an old photo for reference for that and I colorized it and then I turned her into a saint. Mm -hmm. The around the frame or the frame that goes around the painting is computer parts, which is a reference to one of her first cases. And so Ruth Bader Ginsburg took that list that had been generated by the computers as like a hit list of like, okay, these are the laws that we need to work on overturning. These are the unjust laws. She fought with her pen, her voice, and her body to stand against racial discrimination, work for women's rights, protect children, and fight to end poverty. In the wake of World War II, she chaired a UN commission that crafted a universal declaration of human rights. Can you imagine their exchange? Young Geraldine, poised to step foot in the world with all of her gifts and talents yet to blossom, and Eleanor urging, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams, Geraldine. I chose a bright palette to convey the joy and hope that Eleanor has stirred in me and countless others. In the spirit of Eleanor Roosevelt, may you believe in the beauty of your dreams. Even though she suffered a head injury and seizures from abuse, Harriet Tubman risked her own freedom to help others escape the scourge of slavery. After the Civil War broke out in 1861, she served as a nurse and cook for three years. As a scout and spy, she made trips into Confederate territory. Harriet Tubman also became a strong voice for women's suffrage. Harriet Tubman is an American icon. I'm low tech, using everything from the library to brooms, lampshades, windows, and even envelopes as tools. I am inspired by her quietness, her stewardship, her courage, and her integrity to speak her truth, the earth's truth and humanity's truth against powerful interests. Rachel Carson, it is you I cherish. I chose Ida B. Wells Barnett because of the South, the Memphis in me. I chose the photograph of a lotus in Fairway, Kansas to depict how a brilliant, unique blossom rises from the mud and cloudy water to absorb and radiate light. Ida B. Wells Barnett walked on waters of the muddy Mississippi River to use words as a spotlight, sword, and shield to save the lives of black people and improve the status of women. Her dynamic feats made a space for me to be here near another river to tell the story through my images, my lived experience, and my words. Again, we both grew up in Atchison and she left, and we both left, uh, and in our early teenage years. She lived in a house uh, with her grandparents that overlooked the bluffs of the Missouri River. 
And I think she had the dreams that, that I had. When I was 10 years old, I had a paper route that ended on her grandparents' front um, steps. And I would sit there and watch the sunrise over the Missouri River. Then her cheeks represent the women pilots uh, societies. And here. Then on her neck, I put the Atchison Topeka Santa Fe Railroad. That was, of course, an Atchison. 